Good morning. When uh, I was listening to Sean talk about his excitement and waiting for his grandson and his granddaughter to be born, it made me think of this song that I'm about to sing. Can you imagine sacrificing one of your children or grandchildren ever? I can't imagine. So as you listen to and meditate on the words of this song, think that our Lord sacrificed his child for me and for you. Um, the name of this song is The Greatest Christmas Tree. <clears throat> Shepherds came to worship him. Wise men came from afar. But the light that they were seeking was more than just a star. He was heaven's gift sent down to earth. Mary's little boy wrapped there in swaddling clothes was peace, love, and joy. There's never been a greater gift. God gave his only son to whom extended mercy and grace to everyone. The reason why he came to earth to be born within a stall was to die for me on Calvary, the greatest Christmas tree of all. From a stable in Bethlehem to a cross upon a hill praying Father please not my will but thine to fulfill from the safety of the virgin's womb to be hung on Calvary, where the light of the world decorated the greatest Christmas tree. The soldiers that nailed him there, no beauty could they see. Yet an ornament of love they were hanging on that tree. No tinsel, no angel top, just a thorny crown and his gift to all the world was his blood flowing down from a stable in Bethlehem to a cross upon a hill praying Father please not my will but thine to fulfill from the safety of the virgin's womb to be hung on Calvary, where the light of 
the world decorated the greatest Christmas tree. From the safety of the virgin's womb to be hung on Calvary, where the light of the world decorated the greatest Christmas tree. Was Calvary. Thank you, Sister Patterson. And that is so true. That song is loaded with rich meaning, isn't it? We appreciate you sharing. It wouldn't be Christmas without you sharing that song with us. All right, I'm going to ask Sister Martha to come on at this time, and we're going to turn it over to her. Oh, uh, you want Adrian? Okay, Andrea's going here and sing a, uh, play a special for us. And uh, she didn't want to sing it, so she's going to play it, right? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs>
Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Pages two, page 277 in the songbook, and we would like for you to stand and join with us, please. Thank you.
Okay, for the finale, I'm going to ask you all to stand up again, please, and let's sing Joy to the World, the Lord has come, one verse only, and then go tell it to the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Twice for the course. <laughs> Musicians a hand, don't you? As you can see, there's a little bit of confusion. I didn't have the right psalm book. Some of the songs weren't in there, which that might have been a blessing. <laughs> but I appreciate uh, all the choir, all the hard work they did. You know how many practices we had? One. <laughs> I think that's a miracle, don't you? Thank you, Martha, for helping us. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without a cantata, without a play, would it? But, you know, the main thing is we're here to worship the Lord, as I said. And uh, the words of the Christmas carols that we sing, so many times we are so familiar with them. We'll sing them, and they're so rich with meaning, but we won't even think about it most of the time, will we? We just won't even think about it. And uh, sometimes we sing through them without even thinking about them and uh, without even thinking about the words, say, but what we ought to do is take our time sometimes and just think about them and meditate upon them and let the Spirit of God speak to our hearts and as He does that, then indeed we'll worship the Lord like we're supposed to. Amen? But all these, just like the old hymns we sing in the hymnals, someone told me last week, and I think it was Martha, she said she liked coming to, our, coming to our church when she first started because we actually sung from the hymnals. But if you look at those old hymnals, each one of those stanzas, and I've told you this so many times, each one of them is like a uh, a message in each stanza, isn't it? They're so rich with biblical theology, good theology, I would say, as well. And so that's why I think we ought to do that. I was thinking as Sister Andrew was playing that song, I was listening to the words the other night, I was reading the words of that song, and, she, and that's a beautiful song. Didn't she do a great job as well, Oh Holy Night? But if you'll think about it, just think about the words of that old carol. It's so, again, it's so loaded with meaning. And again, we need to think about it and just let the Spirit of God speak to our hearts. But it starts off by saying, O holy night. When you think about it, it was a holy night. Holy is a word that just means to be set apart. It means to be special. So that night that Jesus was born so, so many years ago was a holy night, a special night. It was, as the scripture says, a special night because it was set apart which is the meaning of the word that we find in Galatians chapter 4, in the fullness of time. It was set apart by Jehovah God himself as a night that, uh, the fullness of time is a night that Mary would bring forth her eternal son to be born on that night. So it was a time, a set time planned out, think about this, by the Godhead, the triune Godhead in eternity past, sometime in eternity past. Jabba told me this morning, he said he looked at that movie yesterday on 
uh, Turner Classic. I think it was uh, the greatest story ever told, or King of Kings, one of those. I think both of them was on at the time. But he said he looked at that movie, and he said he cried, he wept when he thought about it. He said, you just think about what Jesus had on him. He knowing all his life that's where he was headed, to the cross. But if you'll think about it, he knew before he even come into this world what he was headed for. Because, you know, God is a sovereign, omniscient, omnipotent God. Uh, he knows everything. That was planned out by God in eternity past. And yet, in spite of that, he lovingly, he willingly, he voluntarily came to this old sin-cursed earth to take on a body of flesh for one main reason, to become the sacrifice for your sins and my sins, to die in our place on the cross of Calvary. But he stepped down from eternity. He stepped down from his eternal throne. And he condescended, he came to this world for that. One great Bible teacher said this, and I wrote it down many, many years ago. He said this, and listen to the words of The second person of the blessed trinity truly and personally became a pinpoint fetus in the body of a young Hebrew woman. But though he became what he was not, he did not cease to be what he was. Isn't that so true? Yeah. Let me read that again, because it's so important when we think about Christmas. But though... Though he came, became what he was not, he became a human being when he was born, right? But he did not cease to be what he was. What was he before? God. God the Son. He continued to be God the Son through birth and after birth. And guess what? He is still God. Amen? He is still God. And then he goes on to say this. He who continued to fill all things and to sustain all things. Remember the scripture says he sustains the world and everything in it by his own power. To sustain all things, also he became contained in the virgin's womb and was sustained by a human mother, living simultaneously the massive life of the Godhead and at the same time the creaturely painful life of humanity. God did that for us. That is amazing. That is an awesome, awesome thought. And the only thing that I can say to add to that as I really think about it, as we think about it, is what? Wow. God did all this for us. How he could be contained in the virgin's womb and at the same time sustain all things. Only God could do something like that. But he was the son of God. And when we, we come to understand exactly what was involved and why he did that for us, our salvation, so we could have forgiveness of sins, so that we could become children of God, then we had to join the writer on the second stanza when he said, Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voices. O oh, night divine. O oh, night divine. O night when Christ was born. Then the next stanza says this. Led by the light of faith serenely beaming. With gl glowing hearts by the cradle we stand. So led by the light of a star sweetly gleaming. Here came the wise men from Orient land. The king of kings lay thus in that lowly manger. In all our trials born to be our friend. He knows our need. He knows our weaknesses. And his, we, our weakness is no stranger to him. Behold your king before him come, lowly being before him, lowly being. And again, when we come to understand as best we can with the finite mind that we have what Jesus did for us, the only thing we ought to do is bend on our knees and praise him and thank him for his mercy and his grace and all he has done for us. In the scriptures, the book of Hebrews, the Bible tells us this in Hebrews chapter 2. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, being Jesus, also likewise himself took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest, and things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. That's the reason for Christmas, my friends. He came, again, to be born of a virgin, to take on a body of flesh, a real human body, just like we have flesh and blood, bones, muscle and all, and body, mind, soul, to do one thing mainly, to be a sacrifice for our sins, to take our place on the cross of Calvary. Only the love of God could do that. Amen? We can't understand it. We can't even comprehend it that God himself would step down from his throne and condescend and come down here and, and humble himself 
and being made in the fashion of men in order to die for us to take our place on the cross of Calvary, bearing our sins. And it was prophesied 600 years. Won't do it now because we don't have time. But go back and read Isaiah chapter 53, maybe the day before the day is over, and read exactly what the prophecy is some five to 600 years before he was born in Bethlehem. A graphic description of him dying on a cross in our place, bearing our sins. And the Bible says it pleased the Father for him to bear our sins, to suffer for us in our place. Why? Because he loved us just that much. The gospel, and that's the gospel in Isaiah, but the gospel in John says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I hope and pray that this morning you can say that you personally have at one time or another in your life bowed the knee by the lowly cradle, cradle as you're thinking about what Jesus did for us but you gave your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ you received him as your savior as your Lord and one day you'll be with him forever and ever and ever the Bible says one more verse of scripture 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 for he hath made him that's Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Isn't that amazing, folks? He hath made him who knew no sin. Who was that? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born, lived, and died, but yet he never sinned. The Bible says he was test, tempted and tested in all points, just like we are, but never sinned. Right before he died, he faced his accusers. says, which of you can convince me of sin? Which of you can convict me of sin? The Bible says he was holy, harmless, and undefiled. He had to be that way so that he could die in our place as an innocent victim taking upon us, taking upon himself the penalty for our sins so that we might be saved and become children of God. But that's, a, that's an amazing thing when you think about what God, and again, God did that for you. He did it for me. And we are so, so undeserving. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. And you might be here today, and you might be one of those that never has trusted Christ and given your heart to the Savior. When you understand and know what God did for you by doing all that he did and sending his son, I don't know how in the world you could possibly say no to Christ if you do not know him. But this morning, there might be someone here that's never received Jesus as Savior and Lord. I'll be right down here at the front. And I will meet you down here in front. I'll pray with you. And you can find a Savior this morning if you've never been saved. Let's stand with our heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, thank you again so much for this day of worship that we've been here today. Thank you so much for the songs that the choir has sung for us today in this cantata. Thank you for Martha and leading it, Lord, and Sister Becky playing, and Andrea as well. I pray that it's been a blessing to everyone. But now, Lord, the most important thing that we can do in this service is offer an invitation and appeal to those who are here and one might be here today that has not come to know Christ. And I pray that that be the case, that you would speak to his or her heart. And Lord, may they come and do today what they'll be so glad they did when they stand before you in your presence by receiving Jesus. But whatever's done, we'll thank you and we'll praise you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
lift your heads. Thank you again, choir. Y'all did so good. I, I reckon we would be dangerous if we start practicing, wouldn't we? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for being here today. And as you're going out today, everyone gets a gift, every family at least. Uh, we've got pens, free pens, and a cal calendar. Don't you want a new calendar for the new year coming up? Hard to believe another year's upon us, isn't it? But get, be sure to get one and be some ushers back there giving them out this morning. And some fruit baskets as well for some of the widows, and widows I believe, as well. Don't forget Wednesday night. Be here Wednesday night. We'll have a regular service on Wednesday night. This is going to be a busy week. But if you can come out for the midweek lift, you'll enjoy it. If you come, and you will be blessed. I promise you that. And then don't forget, next Sunday morning, we'll just have worship service at 11 o'clock. Okay, I know it's a busy time for everybody. But what a better place to be than in the house of the Lord on the birthday of the Lord as we celebrate that. Amen? So if you can, be here next week at 11 o'clock. No Sunday school. We just have the worship service. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And do have a merry, merry Christmas. Amen? Brother Jack, if you would, would you dismiss us with prayer?